This week in game news, Super Star Wars was re-released on the PlayStation 4 and Vita. EA revealed that Jade Raymond is working on an open-world action game, and we know nothing else about it. Crytek has released the Back to Dinosaur Island tech demo for free on Steam. Mystery game Jenny LeClue is coming to the PlayStation 4 in 2016. Deus Ex Mankind Divided was delayed to August 23rd, 2016. The bat controversy continues, and Ben Johnson, at game designer Ben on Twitter, has brought a playable recreation of Tennis for Two to the New York Historical Society. It's super cool. This photo is courtesy of Anna Kipnis, at Double Anna, on Twitter. This is the Black Man and Robin Game News Update. First off, we have some pretty big news from Sony. The PlayStation 4 is getting PlayStation 2 emulation. According to an email sent to Wired, Sony says, We are working on utilizing PS2 emulation technology to bring PS2 games forward to the current generation. That's a pretty big deal. In case you weren't tuned in last week, Microsoft brought Xbox 360 emulation to the Xbox One. It's not pure backwards compatibility. Essentially, it's a piece of software that mimics the hardware of whatever platform is being emulated. Sony had nothing more to say about their work on the emulator, but it's nice to know that one is underway. What's driving them to do this? It could be the pressure to compete with Microsoft. After all, Sony initially had no plans to bring any sort of backwards compatibility to the PlayStation 4. While the eventual PS2 emulation is nice, we'll probably never see PS3 emulation at least not during this console generation. The PlayStation 3, besides being more powerful than the PlayStation 2 by leaps and bounds, had a rather complex architecture, making it notably difficult to emulate. Personally, while I don't own either an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4, backwards compatibility is a pretty big selling point for me. It's a large part of what convinced me to purchase the Wii U, and it's now what has me tottering between the Xbox One and PS4. Is backwards compatibility a big deal to you? Let us know. You can shoot us your tweets at Blackman and Robin, or you can let us know what you think on Instagram. We'll be sharing the best comments on next week's episode. Ross, what does it do? Well, listen to this. The incredible new Shovel Knight Amiibo from Yacht Club Games is not only so dang cool you'll scream, ah! it will also unlock a brand new mode in Shovel Knight for the Nintendo Wii U. In other emulation news, a few weeks ago, we highlighted the Wii U emulator Simu. This week, we're pleased to report that while it's still running slowly, it's now able to run Shovel Knight, a game which, incidentally, received a physical release for the PS4 and Wii U last week. We'll keep watching Simu to see how it progresses. Perhaps one day, it'll be perfected. Wow, now we both have shovels to metaphorically symbolize the unlocking of co-op mode. Yeah. I have no idea what you just said. In legal news, the Court of Justice of the European Union has ruled in favor of Nintendo regarding their case against PC Box, a company that made mod chips for Nintendo consoles. Use of a mod chip would allow you to circumvent the copy protection on a console, for instance, if you purchase a Wii U, this chip would let you run software on your Wii U that Nintendo has not approved. It could be completely legal homebrew software, or somewhat less legal pirated copies of Wii U games. The suit took place in Italy, and the court there noted that while the production of mod chips wasn't inherently illegal, and that there are completely legal uses for mod chips, the court said that they were primarily being used for piracy. Personally, I'm not opposed to mod chips because I recognize that there are completely legitimate uses for them. For example, you can't just load some MP3s onto a flash drive and listen to them for your Wii U. You need homebrew software in order to do this. How do you enable your Wii U to run homebrew? Mod chips. In game releases this week, we start with Star Wars Battlefront. Out now on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows, the game has thus far gotten pretty good reviews. In case you're unfamiliar with the franchise, the Star Wars Battlefront games are shooters set in the Star Wars universe. If you've ever wanted to ride around in a snowspeeder across the frozen plains of Hoth, take on AT-ATs in battle, or zoom around in the Millennium Falcon, you'll want to check out Star Wars Battlefront. 
The main complaint that I've been hearing from reviewers is that the game is lacking in depth and replayability. The single player portions of the game are rather weak from what I've heard, and also I've heard that the flying vehicles sometimes seem to go too far and too fast. Apparently they seem better suited to larger maps. Still, if you love Star Wars, if you're a fan of the music and cinematography and overall atmosphere, you will have a great time with the new Star Wars Battlefront. Mind you, the original Battlefront was released in 2004, and it has the same title as this game, Star Wars Battlefront. If you are purchasing a second-hand copy, be sure to verify which version of the game that you're getting. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes. You can play as a number of famous characters from the Star Wars universe, including Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Also released this week was The Crew Wild Run. It's an expansion for The Crew, and it's gotten rather mixed reviews. While the expansion improves some aspects of the game's visuals and gameplay, critics still cite a weak story and empty world as disappointments that have followed the game around. The Crew Wild Run is available on Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. I'll race anyone and everyone. Because nothing beats the feeling of crossing the line first. All roads lead to more adventures. This world is just waiting to be seen. I'm joining a family. Together we're unstoppable. Everywhere is my playground, and I get to use all my rides. And you, what brings you out here? Out this week on the Wii U is Typo Man. The game's a platformer in which you play as a little fellow made of letters, journeying through a world of words. I have not played the game, but must say that I love its aesthetic. It reminds me a bit of Typewriter and Limbo, and thus far it's gotten pretty decent reviews. Also out on Wii U this week is Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. The reviews are in, and while the core gameplay is pretty good, most critics expressed disappointment with the game's less serious modes. If you're looking for a fun, solid Wii U tennis game, you may want to check this one out. That said, you may have more fun just sticking to the serious, plain old-fashioned tennis modes. By the way, if you purchase the game now, you have until December 17th, 2015 to get a free copy of the N64 version of Mario Tennis from the eShop. Just a quick heads up. Do you prefer slower-paced puzzlers? Hocus was released on Steam this week for Windows and Mac. It's very pretty. If you're a fan of games like Edge and Monument Valley, you might enjoy Hocus. In addition to being out on Windows and Mac, it's also been out on iOS for a while. Hocus isn't the only chill game to be released this week, however. Lost Horizon just came out on Steam for Mac and Windows. It's a 2D space exploration game in which you control a ship floating through the cosmos in search of a new homeworld. Along the way, you have to pick up fresh oxygen and fuel to keep going. It's also available on iOS and Android. There's something about Lost Horizon that reminds me a little bit of Lost in Space. Incidentally, Netflix is planning on a revival of the television version of Lost in Space. I don't have too much to say about that. After all, this is a game show. Need more excitement? We've got you covered with Night Squad. 
Released on Steam this week for Windows, Mac, and Linux, the game has been described as a mix of Gauntlet and Bomberman. It comes with a bunch of multiplayer modes ranging from Capture the Flag to Soccer. Everybody plays as a knight, duh, though you are not limited to swords and crossbows. There are also lasers available in the game. Night Squad has gotten pretty great reception from both fans and critics. The game boasts both local multiplayer as well as online multiplayer for up to eight folks. If you're looking for some couch co-op, check this one out. Well, do you want something for free? Well, this weekend only, the game Obey is having a free multiplayer weekend. You can download the game from obeygame.com. In development by Dan Dez, Obey is an asymmetric multiplayer game in which you can send commands to the enemy team. You can try to bribe them to work against their own self-interest. Thus far, Obey has drawn comparison to Counter-Strike and Spy Party. I'm planning on trying it out this weekend if I can make the time for it. If it sounds like your sort of game, be sure to check it out at obeygame.com. Regarding the Bat controversy, this week on the Steam forums, it was revealed that the developers had quit trying to fix multi-GPU support for Batman Arkham Knight. Essentially, if you have a couple of graphics cards in your PC, Rocksteady is no longer going to try to optimize the game for your setup, in spite of previous promises that they do it. In case you haven't heard of the Bat controversy, essentially, Batman Arkham Knight was released several months ago on PC. Unfortunately, the PC version of the game was horribly, terribly broken, and the developers knew this before releasing the game. When the game launched, it came with a slew of technical woes, missing features and issues so bad that WB told players to get refunds. The game was removed from sale and was only recently re-released on PC, but it still has some pretty big problems. We've dubbed this problem the Bat Controversy, and we intend to follow it through to the end. On Steam Greenlight this week, Retroism Games has proposed to bring the first couple Bubsy games to Steam. Titled Bubsy 2 Fur, it's an attempt at helping everybody's favorite bobcat back into the spotlight. The first game in the series, Bubsy in Claws Encounters of the Third Kind, was released in 1993 for the SNES by Accolade. It was an attempt at creating a mascot to rival Sonic and Mario. It didn't succeed, as you may surmise, but Bubsy still has a few fond fans. Mind you, the Bubsy games are just average platformers. They're notably difficult and sometimes a little frustrating, but still, as we mentioned, there's a fan base. In crowdfunding news, this week, the Kickstarter for the Polycade caught our attention. It's a machine that aims to solve the issues that other arcade machines had. The thing is, with most other arcade cabinets, is that they're expensive, they're bulky, and they're not guaranteed to fit in with all of your decor. Additionally, most of them are only able to play a single game. The Polycade, on the other hand, ships with over 90 games built in, including Pac-Man, Xevious, Final Fight, Tempest, Echo the Dolphin, Street Fighter 2, Championship Edition, Flicky, Sword of Vermilion, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Additionally, the Polycade can be used to emulate other arcade machines and consoles. You could potentially play thousands of games on it. Also worth noting is that the project is being run by Tyler and Dylan Bushnell. These are the sons of Nolan Bushnell, who you may know as the founder of Atari. Nolan isn't working on this project, but one of the Kickstarter reward tiers is an Atari 2600 cartridge signed by Nolan Bushnell himself. No word on if it's an ET cart. If you'd like to check it out, you can either visit polyk.com or you can check out blackmanandrobin.com for a link to the Kickstarter. Psyonix has been doing a good job keeping Rocket League fresh with new content. This week, they announced the Chaos Run DLC, which, according to them, is thematically inspired by films and literature set in grim, post-apocalyptic futures. Looking at the trailer, it's basically Rocket League Mad Max. This DLC comes with new cars, decals, and other cosmetic items, 
and will be available on both the PlayStation 4 and PC this December. While the Chaos Run DLC pack costs $3.99, it will be accompanied by a free update that brings the non-standard Wasteland Arena, which is a map that's different from the others. Besides having a different appearance and theme, it will also have a different landscape. In case you're unfamiliar with Rocket League, what you should know is that it's a great game, but at current, it basically has one map, but with different themes. That's not a bad thing, of course. Mind you, actual soccer really only has one map. Chess has been played on the same map for hundreds of years, and Rocket League would not be hurt if you played it with a single basic map layout, but this isn't going to be the case for very long. Personally, I've had lots of fun with the one basic layout of Rocket League thus far, and I'm looking forward to this non-standard Wasteland Arena. The fantasy turn-based strategy game Endless Legend received a large update this week. Called the Forges of Creation, it's a free update that brings new units and Steam Workshop integration, thus making it easier to run and install mods. Also, a pair of DLC packs, namely Lost Tales and Echoes of Auriga, were released. Lost Tales brings new quests and Echoes of Auriga is new music. Right now, you're listening to War of the Sunder, one of the new songs. Pretty, isn't it? If you're into RPGs, you may be pleased to hear that Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy XIII, is coming to Steam on December 10th, 2015. The third and final installment in the Final Fantasy XIII saga, the game stars Lightning in one last adventure. Lightning Returns got rather mixed reception from critics. Essentially, if you hated the first two games, you'll probably hate this one as well. If you enjoyed them, however, you'll probably have fun with Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII. The game was previously released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. As of late, Square Enix has been re-releasing older Final Fantasy games on PC, sometimes in less than stellar condition. The ports of the Final Fantasy XIII games, however, have generally turned out well. Finally, we leave you with the trailer for Hollow Knights. In development by Team Cherry for the Wii U, Mac, Linux, and Windows, the game is a cute, slightly Burton-esque platformer in which you explore lost cities, ride giant insects, and fight big bosses. It looks pretty good. Well, that's it for this week's game news. 
For all the latest video game news, reviews, previews, and interviews, be sure to follow at Blackman and Robin on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my own views. You can also visit our website, blackmanandrobin.com, for convenient links to the coolest stuff that we talked about in today's episode. Oh, hello. I'm Arthur K. Finkelstein, homemade jam enthusiast, Wildlife Dental Society member, and author of Jenny the Clue. The greatest adventure novel series in the world! And now I want you to help me write her biggest adventure yet. Jenny the Clue, Detective Who, an interactive adventure game where you control the story. Hey, you're not supposed to see that yet. Spoiler alert! As I was saying, we'll explore the town of Arthurton, a world rich with characters like Jenny the Clue. When her mother is accused of murder, Jenny takes on the case of her life, and soon she discovers nothing is what it seems. An adventure game with choosiness on a massive scale. Crack the case. Save your family. Unearth Arthurton's dark secrets. 